and just do what you're saying. Yeah. Okay. All right, friends. Um, I think we're going to get started. Um, is Jasper Kluter. Uh, on uh, my clock, it's uh, exactly nine o'clock, and we would like to start exactly on the uh, on the hour. The session is recorded. Now it's called business chats, and so welcome to the new ones. Uh, for you you are new for me because uh, I don't recognize the names, but we'll get chance to get to know you a little bit later. So it's Johan Verster. I see there's uh, Atish, Ari Shunder, uh, Jaisri Naidu, and Linda, uh, that uh, are not uh, that, that are new, so welcome. And uh, if you can maybe just quickly take grab the mic and uh, Johan, uh, just tell us how did you get to know about uh, to this morning session? Uh, just briefly, my wife attended one of your uh, in person sessions about 18 months, two years ago. Um, I think there was a gentleman, Trevor, uh, involved in that. Yeah, you can't use the name Trevor and Gentleman in the same sentence, but yes. <laughs> uh, okay, all right. Yes, um, and you know, so I, I, I started a little furniture manufacturing business during lockdown uh, last year, about March, and pardon the puns, I'm trying to give this thing legs. Um, you know, so I'm really reaching out to, and just want to see what, what sort of opportunities are available. Sorry, I'm just uh, getting a call here that I, just want to uh, stop. All right, guys, so we'll get to know each other better, but if you can just say, how did you get to know about our platform? So thanks, Atish. Um, hey guys, um, I was actually invited um, by Ivan, uh, by LinkedIn initially, and um, I've ne re never really had the time to join them. But when I saw Ivan's email yesterday, I decided to join today. Um, basically, I, work for a company that owns a training academy and we found during COVID last year, during the lockdown, uh, you know, many companies uh, for BEE purposes specifically, they weren't able to meet their targets and we reworked our financial models to make it very equitable for our clients and new okay. clients. Uh, yeah, so, so maybe just the format of business chats, the focus going to be on Ivan today. Okay. Topic that he introduced and uh, the way you noticed, uh, so I really just wanted to know, how did you get to know about the platform? Uh, so, but then uh, by all means, all those of you who are joining us, you'll see there's a button at the top, uh, there's a button at the bottom of your screen uh, that, so if you click chat, you can then just uh, put your contact details, your name, the company, websites you want to refer to, et cetera, in the chat room. And then before we leave, everybody can then just uh, uh, click on the chat room and download and you will have all the contact detail. But how we will know whether we find you interesting or not is how you will participate around the topic of today. So the topic of today will be Ivan, which I will introduce shortly. I just want to quickly run through the rest of the group. And, um, and then, uh, yeah, and within, uh, to the extent that you participate you interesting that's when things start to happen for us all right so uh, thank you uh, uh, Jay Sri uh, or no, that was Atish uh, Jay Sri um, so very similar to um, Atish uh, Ivan reached out to me on LinkedIn and I saw an email come through on Gmail and uh, I have changed my details to my company details now and uh, thought I'll start participating in these sessions because we have a little more time on our hands. So thank you, Jasper. Okay, thank you. And Paul, just a quick word from you. How did you get to know about the platform? Yes, um, uh, I represent uh, Red Screen. I'm a director at Red Screen. And there was an invitation sent to uh, Charmaine Mulder. And uh, we spoke yesterday and she asked me to, to hop in. We just started a new division within Red Screen six months ago during COVID. Uh, yeah, so I'm looking forward to see how I can participate in this and um, interact with the team. Uh, so, so just then for perspective, uh, Business Chat is uh, uh, in an initiative uh, community chamber of commerce. We'll talk more about it towards the end of our uh, session in case some more people join us. Uh, but um, <clears throat> for our members who are already part of uh, community chamber of commerce, 
they can then nominate uh, any topic that they feel passionate about or that they feel has value for the broader business community. And they introduce it then with uh, for about 15 odd minutes, 15, 20 minutes. And then from there, we have an open discussion where um, we accept the fact that no one is an expert in this new economy. Yes, we come back, we come into this new economy with a great amount of experiences and networks, but we have to almost navigate our way through this new minefield called the new economy. So we use business chat to start getting to know each other and start working through topics. So uh, uh, from that perspective then, I'm happy to uh, introduce to you our speaker for this morning. And uh, our speaker for this morning is Ivan Anderson. He is a, a co-founder together with me and uh, Trevor uh, Mel, as well as another friend, uh, Ivan uh, Gavin Julian of the Chamber of Commerce and we've got a whole lot of activities that's coming out of it. We'll talk about it towards the end of the meeting. But uh, Ivan's topic and Ivan, you can then just basically introduce to yourself to say why you specifically find this topic so important. And this topic will be measurement, the why, the what, and the when. Over to you, Ivan. Yeah, thanks so much, Jasper. Uh, and good morning to everybody. Uh, as uh, Jasper said, I mean, you know, I've been part of the part of the woodwork uh, since since the beginning. Uh, spot and part in the pun there, Jan. So yeah, no, nothing in reference to <laughs> to your business, but the the framework of the chamber and, and setting up. But uh, just a little bit of background, uh, and I and I certainly don't want to go on for ten or fifteen minutes, Jasper. To be perfectly honest, I want this to become quite interactive and uh, and let's uh, let's chat about it. But just to just to let you know where I'm coming from and what, what my background is. I've uh, been in the, the IT space for over 30 years. Uh, my specialization in, in that area is uh, fully integrated um, enterprise resource planning systems. Um, and uh, as such, I've, I've got to know uh, a fair amount about uh, businesses. I tend to work with uh, medium-sized enterprises, typically entrepreneurial run, uh, work with the, the owners, the executives, the directors of those businesses and uh, and we and we get into um, customizing the solutions specifically to to create effectiveness and efficiency with within within their businesses. So, business processes, business rules, uh, and business measurement are, are, are an area that I've I've worked with uh, for a very long time. So, I have some experience and some background. What it means, as Jasper says, uh, in 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 the, in terms of going forward in in the new economy. Well, I'm sure lots of the fundamentals will still apply, but uh, maybe the ways we do these things need to change. And, uh, and I think that's, uh, that's for me what, it, uh, what it's going to come down to. So business measurement, what is it? Well, you know, you know, there's the old cliche, you know, if you don't measure it, you can't manage it. Um, you know, but the question is, what are you measuring and why are you measuring it? And, and when are you measuring it? I think too many people sort of look at the bank statement at the end of the month and say, do I have enough money to, to pay my debts and perhaps survive? You know, that's their primary measurement of, of, of their business. They might look at their financial statements uh, once a year, you know, and that's six months after everything's finished. What does that really mean? You know, what, what can you actually do about those, those measurements? They, they don't, they don't, in my mind, add a huge amount of value to, to the actual process, the efficiency and the effectiveness and, and and I think efficiency and effectiveness are are two very key words in, in this play you know uh, you know there's an old saying that uh, you know effectiveness uh, is doing the right things and efficiency is doing things right so the question is you know you can do a lot of things right but are you doing the right things um, and 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 that that for me is is very much a fundamental uh, aspect of of measurement you can you can be measuring all sorts of things but are you actually measuring the right things in your business what are the key indicators in your business that actually show uh, that you're on track that you're performing that you you know you can adjust you can adapt because you're not performing um, how are you measuring those things when are you measuring those things and and, and what are they um, you know one of the uh, one of the uh, fathers of, of, of ERP and, and manufacturing consulting, and certainly in my mind, um, uh, Goldratt, uh, you know, he, he, he gives the example of, uh, you know, production environment uh, being measured on output. Now, you know, so what happens, you know, if the sales aren't happening, output simply grows from, from the factory, you build stock, you build a liability, you're actually not being effective. The production people might be being efficient, they might be meeting their targets, they might be producing what they've been asked to produce, but are they producing the right things that are required by the market when the market requires them rather than simply building building stock uh, in, in the factory? And, uh, and you can use that analogy 
in just about any business. Uh, you know, what is what is your stock and trade? How do you actually deliver? What are you delivering and why are you delivering it? So another one of my, my old favorites is a, is a simple formula, which I, I used many, many years ago when I was in a, in a different industry. Uh, and that is uh, 15, 5, 4, 3, 1, 20. Now, if you know what that means, anyone know what that means? 15, 5, 4, 3, 1, 20. Okay, so it's a, it's a typical sales formula. Um, what, uh, what it says is if I make 15 calls, I'll get five appointments. Out of those five appointments, four people will actually be there when I get there. One person will, will actually buy uh, and I could get 20 referrals. So that's the measurement. So if I can actually start working on that kind of measurement and develop that measurement for my business, that's very relevant to the kind of activities that I perform, kind of activities my people perform, um, it's, it's a live measurement, it's an active measurement, um, and, and, it, and it tells me whether I'm heading in the right direction or not. So, you know, what is your 15, 5, 4, 3, 1, 20? Um, and uh, and can you actually, uh, can you actually um, identify that in your business and, and how do you uh, start to measure? So, uh, yeah, as I said, I don't want to waffle on too long. I think I put some, some basic ideas out there. Um, I'd love to hear uh, any questions or thoughts or inputs on, on, on measurement. What are you doing in your business to measure? How are you measuring? Uh, you know, what, are, what are the key elements that you focus on to, to make sure that your business is actually moving forward, especially under these changed environments? You know, what are the kind of activities that, you, that you're engaged in? Um, are you simply sitting back and, and hoping that things are going to go back to the way they were before? Well, personally, I don't believe that's going to happen. I, I think we're in a changed business environment. We're in a changed world. And I think we need to change the way we're doing things uh, um, materially. I mean, how many, you know, Johan just said at the start of the session, this is his first time on this kind of uh, format in this environment, this technology. Um, Johan, you know, whether you're making wooden furniture or, or whether you, you're selling uh, internet technology, I think, you know, these are the kinds of environments you've got to start engaging in. Uh, you know, we've had a, a period now of, uh, what is it, almost 10, 10 months since, since lockdown started. Um, as the chamber, we, we moved uh, straight into the virtual environment at the start of lockdown. Um, Wisdoms, as you can see behind me, one of the other businesses that I'm involved in and your partnerships global, uh, which is a global uh, networking uh, operation, have been things that we've engaged, engaged with over those, that period. You know, I've personally done uh, in excess of 250 Zoom sessions since the start of lockdown uh, that's hosted them. Uh, and uh, and recorded them. I've I've also been, you know engaged in, in in a large number of other uh, sessions where I've I've simply been an attendee, um, and we've connected around the world, uh, absolutely, you know, fully globally connected, uh, just in in that very short space of time. Uh, we've run a number of uh, trade fairs uh, and and seminar type uh, conferences uh, in in that period. Um, we've had speakers from New Zealand, from Bali. In fact, our speaker from Bali is with us this morning. So, Scotty, uh, yeah, all the way from Bali. Um, we've had people from Perth, from Iowa, United States, from the UK, from Bahrain, from, uh, you know, the Arab Emirates, Emirates, from Ghana, from uh, around the globe. Um, and that has all been made possible simply by a change in, in, in attitude and a change in the way we're actually operating. So, and that's that, that's been that's been driven by looking at uh, you know how we how we run our businesses and and how we need to change to engage in those businesses and it's created some wonderful opportunities for us uh, as well. Um, you know one of the one of the events we did was at the end of last year with a with a, a UK operation that specialises in the trade exchange world. So if you know anything about trade exchange uh, uh, credits, it's it's big business around the world. Uh, this particular operation has eight thousand. Uh, members in the UK alone and, and is connected to over 80,000 businesses around the world. Um, so the question then becomes, how do we leverage those opportunities? How do we leverage those connections? Um, and, and what are the kind of activities that we, we're performing to, to do that? So I think I'm going to leave it there. Uh, so Jasper, I'm going to hand back to you and, and, and you can uh, take the questions and comments from the floor. Uh, thanks, uh, Ivan. Yes, and to, to stay focused on the topic and give everyone a chance to uh, add input on that. Um, as you can see, uh, so we will have an introducer and you will get your chance to be an introducer on any topic of your choice uh, uh, in future when you, be, when you join the, the chamber. We'll talk about that later. But uh, the topic today is measurement, <laughs> the why, what and when. 
So here we sit in a, it's not even yet the post COVID economy. We are still in the COVID economy and it's still unfolding. And uh, nobody can tell us how long will it last? What will be the final effect of this whole thing? So I think while uh, Ivan has been talking there, my, the question in my mind is, uh, well, first of all, in your own business right now, what are you measuring? And, you know, is it meaningful? But then almost another question that relates to it, are you in the right business? But uh, let's not handle that question today. That's a topic for another discussion. But uh, the way you will participate, you can put up your hand or you can open up your mic and then you will have a, a quick one sentence introduction of who you are, of what kind of industry you come from. And then I want you to focus on your input on uh, the measurement. What, why are you, uh, what are you measuring currently in your business and why? Uh, and how often do you do it and uh, for, you know, to, to what extent? So uh, let's, uh, I don't see, uh, so, so let's open the floor for any hands to go up there. And I see a hand there, Paul, over to you. Just open your mic and get start talking. Thank you. Um, I've been in IT for 32 years and currently we're in business intelligence and um, financial reporting and business measurements is very close. What we've seen is I did some analysis during COVID and I saw that our customers and at that stage I was part of a global organization. Um, the measurement had to change from customer and engagement to customer to how the customer have changed their behavior. Because COVID have actually enforced customers to change their behavior. Their buying patterns have changed. Their, the way that they've engaged with you, whether it is online channels have changed uh, from walking into uh, a normal shop, with the, which they did in the past. And by being able to track customer behavior as a measurement, um, some of my customers currently are focusing on customer retention because of the change in customer behavior. And that then op opens up a whole new demographic for them in terms of a potential target market. So we're trying to leverage that in our business um, very much so. I do agree uh, with Ivan's comment on, on the sales metrics. Uh, I've been part of sales organizations uh, for, for my entire life. And, and the big thing that has changed for me is how we measure customer behavior and how we set up our businesses now for what I call post-pandemic future-proofing. Because when, when this economy changes out of the pandemic, we need to be ready for a different wave that's going to be hitting us from an economic perspective. And if we position ourselves well as an organization, we'd be able to take advantage of that. Thank you, Paul. Uh, I think that, that opens the floor for even some more questions, uh, but I see Scotty's got his hand up next. Uh, Scotty, over to you. Yeah, thanks, Paul. I wanted to add on to what you said because he talked about change of behavior. And if you have a look at literally in the last couple of weeks, look at the change of behavior to the way in which people are approaching and the attitude towards what was previously the stalwarts of the digital world, um, Facebook, WhatsApp, et cetera. We can now see them dropping like flies. It's been quite an extraordinary um, uh, change. And I, I, I would be interested, Paul, to hear your comments on that because you're obviously you know, quite close to the actual pulse of, of the data, et cetera. Um, has the full effect of the kind of um, Facebook, uh, WhatsApp leave, uh, what was it? Was it five, how many million? 50 million in three days uh, went across to Telegram. It's probably up to, it's, was it 500 million? It's crazy figures. Do you think, do you, do you feel your clients are just going to go, eh, they're all going to come back, it's just a wave? Or is this something that we need to take seriously? Thanks, buddy. Uh, let's go back to Paul. I see it looks like Jasper's had an interruption there, so I'll pick up the, uh, the hosting for the moment. So, Paul, did you want to just answer that, and then we'll get across to Trevor and, and then uh, uh, Jay, Jay Shreen. Sure. Um, so, I'm not an expert on, on social media. But if you look at what's happening in and around the world, social media is actually changing customer behavior dramatically in ways that us old school guys don't necessarily understand. I mean, I heard some guys say this, is, this experience that we're having now is new to them. And I've seen a number of people do that in the last year. They've never had to rely on this engagement. It was, 
It was an engagement of relationships. It was an engagement of we know each other, we've got a trust in the environment. Now we're dealing with, with a different environment. Um, Scott, so I may not answer your, your question specifically, but one of my customers is, I deal with the big banks in South Africa and also some of the insurance companies. Um, and we're looking to break out of that to hedge ourselves. But what we have heard is, and this is something that's going to hit South African businesses this year when they cotton on to it. They actually have a program in place for 2021 where a number of key staff members in executive positions and middle management have immigrated. They're working South African hours in London, in Hong Kong, in Singapore, in Sydney. They're earning South African Bali. Land. Bali, yes. <laughs> okay. I want to go to Thailand. All right. Um, but what that means is the South African um, demographic for employees have changed dramatically. We are no longer competing with fellow South Africans. When I'm applying for a position in Johannesburg, the guy in Cape Town can get it because he doesn't have to travel anymore. Or the best suited person in Boston can get it. Um, and and that is where social media comes in through LinkedIn. Um, this information becomes available. And I think it's, a, it's just a question of time uh, for people to cotton on to that. Um, and then we'll see, we'll see the workplace change yet again. Already we've got thousands of empty buildings in Santon. They're not even switching on most of the traffic lights anymore because there's no traffic. Yep. That's yep. incredible. Paul, could I, uh, sorry, Ivan, just very quickly, uh, could I do an interview with some time for you on this sometime, just 10, 15 minutes? I do uh, a lot of podcasts and interviews. I'd really like to, to get this message across if you feel it's something that can be said or if it's remaining in the, in the private. Can we, can we do that? Yeah, absolutely. Just uh, reach out to me anytime, no problem. All right. Let's, uh, thanks, Paul. Let's uh, hear there from, uh, uh, I don't know whose hand was first, but let's go to Chris first. Jayseri. Thank you so much. So um, this is not so much about measurement in our business, but I'd like to hear Ivan's thoughts on we are guilty of this as well. So we're running a small business or, you know, I call it a little big business, but we work with entrepreneurs every day. And what I see we guilty of and entrepreneurs are guilty of is not putting in measurement practices into their business. When you work in a large corporate, it's almost the norm. So I've been in you know, corporate South Africa for over 25 years. But when you're running a small business, you almost don't put in those structured processes and practices around measurement. So Ivan, I'm very keen to understand from you is how do we make this the norm for small businesses and for entrepreneurs and even for companies like ourselves? to start putting in these measurement practices because you know in big business you have to do it for performance management for uh, what they used to refer to as balanced scorecards and the like but uh, smaller businesses guilty of not putting these practices in so i'm keen to hear your views on that thanks Tracy. i think i think i think a very a very good point and i'm sure paul would agree very often the measurements that are put in corporates are actually not the right measurements um, I think, uh, you know, they do a lot of things, as you said, for, simply for the purposes of performance management, reporting, those sorts of things. The question I would really ask is how much of this truly add value to your bottom line as a business? Um, and, and that's the key for small businesses. You know, don't see this as this monster. See it as honing into a couple simple but absolutely critical indicators on that, that that are specific to your business and your business operation. So, so how do you make your money? Okay, so look at how you make your money. What is, what is the primary source of revenue that comes into you and how are you going about acquiring that primary source of revenue? And then look at what you can actually uh, measure around that um, and, and, and fine tune it down to one or two simple measurements. And, and it, it can be done on a spreadsheet, it can done, be done on a piece of paper, you don't need fancy systems. Paul, I, I, I love BI, okay, but you don't need BI at that level. You know, it, it's simple and it's simple intelligence. It's, it's about getting the right information to the right people at the right time so you can make quality business decisions. And, and that's the mistake a lot of people make with these things. They see these either as onerous, non-value adding things, you know, we've got to produce financial stations, we've got to produce management accounts. Those are not measurements. Those are recordals of history. 
Okay, they're, they're actually not measuring anything except for history and history actually has no value in this process. Like other to say we did badly or we, we didn't do badly. So, so, so what, you know, <laughs> what are you changing now? Um, and what are you focusing on now, which, which drives those critical things? So the first is revenue and the second is costs. So, you know, how are you containing your costs? What can you do to actually sharpen your pencil from that perspective? You know, where are those things actually being managed? So some very, very, very simple measurement systems and processes that you can look on a, on a very regular basis um, just to, to, to say, hey, well, I'm on the right track or I'm not on the right track. And, uh, you know, and I think it's getting that understanding, you know, uh, the, the, one of the big problems with solo entrepreneurs or small entrepreneurs is, is often the individual is the business. And, and, the, and they feel this, this sense of just overwhelm. You know, there's just, there's just too much. I've, I've got to go out there. I've got to go and make money. And it's just run, 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 run the whole time. Um, and I am, the, I am the IP of the business. I'm the intellect of the business. I'm, I'm, I'm everything. So how do I then measure? You know, the trouble is by not actually looking at a couple of those simple things is where's my money coming from? Where's my money going to? How do we rationalize those things? You actually don't have control of your business. All you're doing is, is, is you're, in that, you're in that frenetic activity of staying alive, of survival. So you've got, to, you've got to lift yourself beyond the survival mode just to identify those key things and make sure you have them basically under control and you understand what they are. So you can see the red flags when they pop up because if you head down just running every day, uh, you know, the red flags are going up all over the place and, you, and you're not seeing them until it's too late. And, and I, I think that's the message one need, needs to get across to small businesses is it's not complex. Right. Thanks, thanks, Ivan. And I think uh, our Mr. <laughs> thanks, Ivan. Uh, our Mr. Uh, where is the money? Trevor, you had your hand up a while, so just come in on that. Absolutely, because I want to interrogate it. just a couple of comments here, but I think just to catch up on something that Ivan said, I think small business around the world is completely imploding. Uh, everything that we thought we knew at the beginning of 2020, you can throw all the books away. That's why I've given you my confessions of a serial entrepreneur for absolutely free uh, in the link over there. Um, but why it's going to be of value to you is that I think we're all returning back to basics. All this techno technology that we've got, uh, really you need a simple little piece of paper to actually follow the basic metrics that Ivan has given you. Um, how much money has come in? What are the costs? Uh, is there a positive difference? Um, and uh, where did I get it from? Who are my key customers? Uh, where's the target market? What do they look like? Uh, I think this is where Ivan uh, comes in with the basics. This is going to be a big return uh, back to the basics. That's just one comment on the back of Ivan. Uh, but Paul, I'm fascinated with the comment that you made, uh, but I'm going to go to Jayshree quickly. If she doesn't mind, she made a comment that she's a little big business. What do you mean by that? So that I, I get an idea. Are we talking about millions of rands per annum? Uh, are we talking about hundreds of thousands of rands per annum? Are we talking tens of millions? Uh, this is not to, meant to be an embarrassing question. I just want to know uh, where people see themselves as a little big business. Uh, what are you talking about, Jayshree? Just to give me a quick indication. Tens of millions of rands, millions of rands below that. So just under tens of millions of rands. So we Great stuff. are just reaching that tunnel at the moment. Great stuff. I mean, so, uh, I mean that's exciting. But uh, but your boat uh, has been rocked big time. I bet you, uh, just as many other people have been rocked. And what we're doing here is looking to get an understanding of how quickly can we bounce back. And just to add to the comment. Um, did I make the point to Ivan that I believe this implosion of business is as a result of all this technology we've got here allows us to all work from home and we're going to start saying, well, why the hell do I need to work for a corporate if they're not paying me decently? Uh, I can run a major business, a major little big business please God, like Jay Shri Naidu does. And we've got to try and double that one. And between ourselves, we've got to see how we can work from home to actually double and triple the revenue that Jay Shri has. That's the type of thing that we're doing here. Then Paul, if I can come to uh, something that you said, because I just want to interrogate the numbers. Um, I interpreted through your comment that there's been a major change in 
uh, your customer research database. And I'd like to know what the numbers were pre-2020 that you were able to research, and then you discuss the research that you've just done recently, and what were the numbers of that base? Uh, just so I can get a feel of how your industry has changed and your reach, um, just because we may be of use to each other in this network, if we understand how the numbers have changed for you as the modality or the base for your research that you're repeating. Cool. Um, thanks, uh, Trevor. Uh, just one comment. Uh, apart from what comes in and what goes out, uh, we've see, well, we are experiencing our customers are saying, and this leads to your answer, um, how do we drive efficiency? We will not invest in projects that doesn't have a clear ROI, a clear return on investment, um, or a clear indication of how it drives efficiency. And after the first six months um, of, of COVID, we saw that customers are still, some of them were still saying, it's, a, just a, it's just a question of time before we go back to situation normal, back in office blocks, back in, in the offices. Uh, that's not true. The big boys are saying, we're shutting down offices. My wife works in a company that owns and builds shopping centers. And they are rapidly closing down shopping centers because they have no more tenants. So, um, Trevor, I don't know if I have all the answers for that, but what I can certainly tell you is that the focus from where we were, we were working with certainly in deal sizes, um, in dollar terms, um, $100,000, $200,000 deals, we're now working with approximately a tenth of that and it takes twice as long to get a signature. Um, and it's not because people don't see the value. I've not had one bad meeting and I have an average of eight meetings a day. I've not had one bad meeting and, since last year. And if I can add to that, Paul, that's the importance of the feedback for this group here, is you haven't changed. The quality of your service hasn't changed. The quality of your research hasn't changed. Those blooming customers out there have completely changed. And, and I, I suggest when they turn around and say it's all about efficiency, it's rubbish. Um, it's about the basic metrics that Ivan is talking about. From corporate right down to us, the little guys sitting in our home offices right now, which, by the way, uh, we're connecting with the CEOs who are in their own home offices uh, right now. The basic metric is how do I maximize profits and minimize costs? That's all I'm interested in right now, but I'll give it the term efficiencies. I, I actually, I actually want to want. Sorry, yes, but I actually want to contradict both Paul and Trevor on that one. I don't think it's about efficiencies at all. I think it's about effectiveness, and I think there's a very meaningful difference between those two words. And people use them interchangeably, and I and I, I believe that's a fundamental mistake. Okay, you can be as efficient as hell, but you actually just you're just doing things right. You're not doing the right things, and it's about finding out what are those right things that you should be doing, and then doing them really well. Okay, you, it's, it's, not about, it's, not, it's not about efficiency at all, uh, it's a, and especially in, in this current marketplace. It's about how effective am I? Am I truly effective in what I'm doing? Thanks, Ivan. Uh, Paul, back to you. Uh, you answered the question of Trevor, but you also had your hand up. Was there a new uh, thing that you would like to add? No, we've already covered that. All right, let's uh, jump to some of our people who haven't uh, put their hands up yet and just hear from them. Uh, Atish, uh, in your line of business, are you measuring and what are you measuring and why? Uh, let's hear, hear from you. Well, in our business, um, we've got two phases of our business. Um, one's a corporate finance deal-making unit uh, where I head up valuations uh, and the deal-making side with our CEO. And we've got another side where we provide skills development um, services to various corporates uh, and um, medium-sized entities across South Africa. Um, what we found is during COVID, um, obviously companies are struggling uh, financially. Uh, and you know, part and parcel of doing business in South Africa is obviously BEE um, and to get to maintain your BE levels, you've got to spend money. Um, 
we specifically on the skills development and socioeconomic development side, um, we worked our financial models where we made it cost efficient, cost effective, effectively for our clients, but we worked it in such a way that they actually almost have a zero spend on their um, skills development com commitments. And we found last year, we trained over 30,000 students throughout South Africa. Um, you know, um, with clients maintaining their levels on the skills development, social development, we've assisted them with a value added service uh, on other parts of the business and got other clients uh, within the, our supply chain to assist them as well. So, you know, it was a, almost a turnkey um, service offering. Um, this year, you know, our metrics is the number of students that we can get through the system on learnerships. Um, finished off the year with over 30,000 students. Um, obviously, those same clients have committed to those same 30,000 students. And in January, we have signed on clients to take on another 5,000 students. And we're hoping to grow that to about 80,000 in the year. So, you know, we, we are measuring our matrix on the number of students within the system. Um, you know, um, we almost break even uh, with the business that we're doing. It's all volume based. So for us to make a profit, it has to be large volumes uh, of students just to ensure that our clients actually get the benefit of um, the services that we offer, but also maintain their, their business models to attain and retain existing business that they still do have. So, you know, that's the way we've worked our model and maintain our profitability. Uh, thanks, Atish. <clears throat> yeah, so in future, we will certainly uh, get a chance as you come back to the platform to know more about each other's business and we'll see where there would be some synergy. But for now, <clears throat> we'll go with the topic. Ivan, you want to comment on that? Uh, just, just a quick comment on, on what Atish said and, and a thought that came, came to me as we were discussing. I think he mentioned you know, two key things in, in there for me, which maybe I'll adapt slightly. And, and the first is lifetime customer value and the cost of customer acquisition. And, and I think, you know, uh, those can be very meaningful measurements in, in some businesses as well. And uh, I know Trevor has a fav favorite formula from Jay Abrams, which he might actually uh, tell, tell us about a little bit later. But uh, think of those two things, cost of customer acquisition and lifetime customer value. Yes. All right. Thanks, Atish. And thanks for that uh, add on value of Ivan. Let's hear from uh, uh, one of our new people as well, uh, Johan. Um, what are you measuring in your business and why? Johan Verstaer. Hey, Johan, I think you might be muted. Can, can you hear me now? Yes. I think um, a very interesting discussions and I'm really enjoying it. I think it, you know, at this stage where I am in my business, the really the two big measurements is is trying to get mud on the wall, obviously try and get more orders. And in order to do that, I mean, the, the most critical measurement is really the quality of the work. Um, so it, I'm not really measuring, um, you know, the sort of matrices that, that you guys are talking about. Um, but I found the, the discussion very interesting. All right, thank you, Jan. Uh, Scotty, you got your hand up. Do you want to comment on Jan, or do you have a new on your hand? Price? Yeah, no, Jan. I, I know what you're saying because um, the, the the primary measurement of a small business is usually, in their mind, the quality of the work. Um, but actually, it's more than that, in my opinion. It's the quality of your personal reputation as known in the industry for doing great work. Mm. Sounds like the same thing, but the one is reactive and the other one is proactive. So I just wanted to throw, and this is something I'm going to be talking about next week when I present at, the, at this time in the chamber next week, is very much about that personal reputation and how you actually proactively build your reputation for somebody who can do great work and understand their pain. So I just wanted to mention that, Johan, because I think a lot of small businesses do rest on their laurels a little bit, and they kind of just hope doing good work will somehow mysteriously spread around the industry. It doesn't just spread on its own. You've got to throw a bit of petrol on that fire. Can't agree with you more. Um, I think it's a case of, you know, when as you, you're trying to build a personal brand, um, you know, through, through the work that we do. Um, yeah. Thanks for that, Scott. All right. Thanks, Scotty. Thanks, John. Uh, let's hear from, uh, uh, I see we have a new person joining us uh, during the course of the morning. 
Uh, I just see the, your link there is Ya Mathaps. So uh, if you would like to open up your mic, the, the question is, what are you measuring in your business and why? So Ya, let's hear from you. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Sibu Siso. Um, I just stumbled across the, the meeting, actually. <laughs> um, I'm a small business, basically dealing farming and uh, maintenance uh, property. Um, I guess at the moment, we're just measuring whatever business we can get and uh, the impact, obviously, of COVID at the moment. All right, thanks, Sibu Siso. And uh, how did you stumble across our meeting? Did someone invite you? Um, no, I just I saw it on the internet, actually, that there's a meeting. Okay, but welcome. Yeah. Uh, it happens every Friday morning, 9 to 10. So tell your friends about it and come and join us. Okay, thank you. Then we have uh, Dawn. Uh, tell us about the... Uh, how your life has changed and what are you currently measuring? Well, thank you, Jasper. So, morning, everybody. It's Dawn Coulson with a firm. My company's called Designs, D Z I N E S. We in the exhibition and retail space. Uh, and I have my own business for over 20 years and spent a lot of time in the physical realm. Well, obviously, COVID has put an end to that. So, we have been forced into change, which is not a bad thing either. And just for the new people, just being part of the chamber has honestly been so beneficial. And it's not just about being a member, it's about a networking with other entrepreneurs that can assist you to get to where you need to be. It's not just uh, me that may have something to offer you, uh, but it's my network and it's my contacts that I've built up over the years that may be able to uh, assist you with where you're going. So it's very really beneficial to, to be part of the chamber and it's also you need, you need to be consistent because just popping in every now and then is not going to get you anywhere. It's about building networks and it's about building relationships with different people that begin to get to know you and trust you and get to know you as a person. And I think that's what's important. And especially now with the, with the transformation that's happened, uh, it's given me the space to go virtual now with the chamber's help because um, being in the exhibition industry, I've got a lot of knowledge in that space. And we work together with the chamber, with the expertise of the chamber to get the virtual trade fair and the virtual mall up and running, which has been very successful. So something that I never ever thought I would be involved is in the virtual space. I mean, I hardly spent any time on my computer because I was always on site doing the physical aspect of things, uh, seeing customers, making sure the project gets built, pulling the whole job together. Now, with COVID in 2020, I was thrown into being sitting in front of my computer for days and days and on Zooms, which I'd never done before. So it's also opened up these opportunities for me to learn. So you hung, don't be put off by not knowing what to do. There's a lot of us that don't know what to do. But if you're consistent, you will learn and you'll meet people that will help you along the way. Um, just um, also, I have another cap that I wear. We've got another small company that we're busy with uh, safe drinking water, which is that's another product that we're busy with. And thank you, Ivan. I like the 154120. I'm going to apply that to our new uh, our other new company. And um, yeah, I think Paul, Paul, also your, your wife in the um, retail space. Maybe I can connect with her. Maybe we can help, maybe benefit from that. And Johan too. Johan, you're also in the furniture building industry, which um, we're also now going into domestic and doing a lot of um, home improvements and things like that. So there's a lot of ways that you can connect. Make sure all your details are in the chat so that we can connect with afterwards. Um, I'm not sure. So our virtual platform that we now have developed this is the, for the future now. We are now, it's a well-established platform. It's tried and tested and it's got global reach. We're now offering this platform out to individual companies or people that you may know that can hire our platform. We rebrand it with the particular client's own branding. So this platform now is for hire and we will take care of the whole back end and they just need to, whether it's a launch 
or a, a product day that they want to have or just a customer get together, we have this platform all established already. All right, thanks. Yes, I think uh, uh, we'll, we'll just summarize uh, all the value offer from the chamber a little bit later, but uh, you mentioned something where you literally lost an industry, uh, not through something that you did wrong. I mean, you were one of the stars in that industry, but external circumstances wiped it off the table. Uh, now, if, and you did mention your gratitude for having the platform of the community chamber uh, during this time. Uh, but I was just thinking, and maybe you can uh, give us some feedback on it. Uh, if you didn't have uh, the chamber, and now you have to reinvent yourself, reposition yourself, and all people know, because they know the old dawn from your designs, uh, but now who is this new dawn? Uh, would you say that uh, it's easier to leverage and build relationships by linking up with uh, an established, uh, call it network of people uh, versus trying to do it on yourself? Uh, in what way has, has this last year helped you? Yes, yes, but 100%. I mean, if you're an entrepreneur and you're on your own, and we've all been there, it's really hard. It's hard to try and build up and build a network and it's very really time consuming and lonely space. And if anything goes wrong, you've got no one to really assist or ask for advice. But being a part of a community where there are always other expertise that you can bounce off ideas or ask for advice, and that's the strength in it. So for me, that's definitely, I mean, if I had been on my own, I haven't even thought about it because I mean, being with the chamber, we immediately went into the virtual trade fair on the first 21 days of lockdown. We all sat together with the expertise because we were going to do, if I go back to the beginning, what, what we, had, we, we were going to do as a chamber. Because exhibitions are so expensive for entrepreneurs to go on, we had planned to do a physical, low-key, cost-effective physical exhibition at your venue, uh, which is Eagle's Nest, for the entrepreneurs. But, and that was planned for April last year. And of course, we couldn't do it. So that's why the chamber then came together and pulled me in and said, well, why don't we go virtual? So if that hadn't happened, I haven't even thought about it, yes, but what would I have actually done? Because it's been so intense. From the first 21 days, we worked flat out on it. We had our first exhibition on the 19th of June, four-day virtual exhibition. And then it's just snowballed from there. So I haven't actually even given it thought. But I probably... I would have done something because I'm not one that doesn't have ideas, but where and what I'm not actually quite sure. Or as I said to you, we have gone into the domestic, but now that's reinventing myself and getting out to a different market altogether that don't know of me. And you've got to start from the beginning because it's referrals and re-advertising in a different avenue. Thank I don't know if I've answered your question. No, I think you, you do. And I think uh, Trevor, you want to come in on that? Um, I actually want to ask a teacher a question and just make a comment um, because I'm trying to look at uh, Tish websites, but I can't find anything on uh, Oceanic Capital, so it must be a, a direct mail-in website. But just to let you know, I developed the Academy of Learning back in the late 1980s, and your figure of 80,000 students, I did 80,000 students in 18 months and then sold that out into a listing. Um, so if there's anything that we can touch base on there, uh, we've got some concepts that we're taking global uh, that we might be able to do together. Um, so perhaps I'm going away, but if you connect with Ivan or myself, maybe we can have a chat offline. Uh, yeah. That might be mutual interest. Huh? Yes, um, our website is actually the learnership academy that we own is called Advanced Academy, A T V A N C E. Can you put that link in? I'll go and have a look at it, and then I'll connect with you as well. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Oh, at Tish, Advance, did you say? Yes. Isn't that, is that connected to Jason O'Reilly? They do uh, from Advance, a different Advance. Um, I don't know Jason O'Reilly. Uh, they, they just sold, at, Advance just got sold into a bigger company. They do a lot of uh, cybersecurity, was called Advance. Oh, no, no. That's no, just no. a coincidence. Okay. Totally different. <laughs> and and yes, but, uh, yes, but if I may, and just tell me if I'm out of line in your format here, uh, but Atish, 
uh, going forward into 2021, what do you perceive as being your biggest challenge? Uh, what are you really looking to achieve? Uh, what do you need? Who do you need to connect with? If you can get that well, out in 30 our seconds. Our biggest challenge is getting corporates to realize that we're actually out there. You know, we don't do very much marketing. It's by word of mouth that we build our business. Um, you know, it's it's been very difficult to get into. Not really difficult. It's um, I don't think people or company executives are open to having um, meetings with people they don't know right now. Um, you know, um, for us, it's just getting to the boardroom, showcasing what we offer. And if the client wants to take us on, we're happy to take it on. If not, that's okay. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, we want to uplift the youth in the communities that they live in. We put campuses, well, we put sites in over 170 throughout South Africa in the various townships to assist the black community to uplift themselves and get them to a stage where they can walk into a workplace and do a job. Um, you know, with the models that we've implemented, uh, we found it very beneficial. Uh, and we want to take that forward and get corporate South Africa to uh, work with us. Obviously, there's the likes of the YES program, which you've probably heard of. Uh, with that being government endorsed, you know, they've got a larger platform to play with um, amongst South, the corporate South Africa. But, you know, we don't want that limelight. We want to do what we think is necessary um, to build uh, an effective, inclusive economy uh, amongst every participant in South Africa. So that's basically what we want to do. So, uh, Jasper, I know that I could take up the next hour just questioning addition. Dawn knows that I can do that, uh, but I see the big potential. And when I look across uh, the people on this particular network, how you can actually work together to help Atish do what he's doing, but also generate contact and the type of uh, corporate leads that you need. So I see how people like Paul and Jay Shri, I don't know Jay Shri if you're connected, um, and that the banks and all of the resources that we have together. What Scott can do with someone like yourself uh, together with ourselves is amazing just in this little network here. But I better shut up, boss. I'm handing it over to Jasper. All right. Uh, thanks, uh, Trevor. And for you guys who lived with us for the last three years, uh, we've got an amazing amount of expertise from people like Trevor who can take a struggling training company and, and turn it around and take it to listing and eventually ended up with three companies on listing. And Ivan who can understand uh, business inside out and put systems and structures in place. And I've got my expertise coming from the Industrial Development Corporation having worked, knowing how to structure and finance big corporates like Sussel and places like that, all the way down to working with business partners and understanding small business. So I think this is a good time to actually uh, just summarize and say what is the purpose of this platform. And uh, if you've enjoyed this morning's discussion on a topic, and I must be honest, when uh, Ivan put it up, measurement, what, when, why, uh, uh, I'm probably more like a people's person, so <clears throat> less of a, a technical numbers person. Uh, but I was curious to know um, how will this discussion go? And uh, I'm very pleasantly surprised with the quality of the input and the quality of people who've joined us today. And I think that's the point that Trevor is making. The world right now is full of quality people. Um, and unfortunately, circumstances has just wiped your influence and your effectiveness off the table. Uh, so what now? You're still the same person. You can still add tremendous value. But if you have to now go the conventional route and start all over from scratch as a one-man show and knock on doors, and there are lots of people out there who will build a website for you and help you to uh, search engine optimization and stuff, all the conventional stuff. But man, you're already too late. You're not going to survive long enough to see the benefit of that. We need to think out of the box. We need to think the new technology and in some of our future topics will be trends and 21 and stuff like that. Um, so you can participate, you can choose and continue to participate every Friday morning. And if you enjoyed it, we would appreciate if you can show your gratitude by inviting one more person. So the same uh, Zoom ID will be used next week from nine to 10. Now the topic for next week, and uh, Scotty has touched on it, 
but the topic for next week is uh, your personal reputation and credibility. And uh, Scotty is one of the, the new breed of entrepreneurs who is currently running his global business. Uh, he's a South African, but he's now running his global business there from Bali. And just to annoy all of us, every now and then he sends a nice picture of an island scene there, or I'm on my way to get a spa treatment or stuff like that. You know, uh, <clears throat> so he's really in your face with that kind of thing. But Scotty will be our speaker next week on this credibility and personal reputation. So get the word out. But if you want to know more, and what Trevor was alluding to, we've got, uh, and we've got uh, uh, examples of how people has been helped by or act actively participate in the Chamber of Commerce. And I just quickly want to take the screen and uh, take you to, I think this, uh, uh, this is it. Let me go there. Uh, so can you see my screen there? Trevor? Uh, or someone? It's okay. Yep. Yeah, okay. So you can see the screen. So guys, so yep. in order to help give the, the, the individual business owner a business uh, owner or entity out there, the leverage that they can connect nationally and internationally. And instead of just trying to uh, uh, introduce themselves, but they do it from a platform that we're part of the chamber. We have developed three uh, participation points. The one is a basic membership of 249 per month. There's a middle membership we call standard for 467 per month and our premier membership at 973 per month. So what, what do you get for that? So we say access to all chamber meetings, which is amongst others, this business chat. But then we will have every person who is an active member uh, of the chamber um, by knowing who you are, you'll see a lot of offline con connections happening. And what Trevor's saying, you can already see how Scott can come in and help and this can come in and help, but we only do it for people who are a member, a, a part of our active members. Then we have a community bank uh, activity. So we have registered community bank, uh, got our license in 2005, uh, 2015. But the incredible part of it we are the only chamber and community bank that can now offer its members access to interest-free loans. So if you want to know more about it, you can talk to us there. And then there are some other club uh, webinars that you can attend every Sunday night. We have a, a webinar on generational inheritance, uh, talking about how you can build for the future. Every Monday to Fridays, uh, nine, uh, 8 to 8.30s, uh, Trevor and Ivan, uh, are running a wisdoms chat uh, where we just do some soft skills the, uh, uh, programs and, and talk on any, this morning the topic was what's the difference on money and wealth and stuff like that. So there's a lot of value already at the basic membership. Then at the standard membership, we add then the virtual mall at one of our future topics, we'll talk about the virtual mall, but it's a place for you as an entrepreneur to uh, market test your value offer to the market and say to and see is my positioning right is my price point correct is my packaging uh, accepted very sophisticated platform that gives you access to national and international markets uh, and then you can work from there and then at the premier membership uh, we have two big values we're still finalizing the last value but access to an international networking platform called your partnerships and then also a virtual board um, uh, where your company is then invited once a month and we then bring our panel of specialists in various areas and then we just focus and drill down on your business. So if you want to know more, go to uh, Four Ways Community Chamber. Now the Four Ways is no longer relevant, but the, the uh, we will in time to come change the uh, uh, URL, but for now go to Four Ways Community Chamber of uh, .co.za or fccc.co.za and uh, check us out, see what's happening there. What you will also uh, see on the, in, in, in the website will be access to uh, old uh, or our previous virtual trade fairs, the topics that was done there uh, and all sorts of things. So thank you all for participating. We hope to see you then uh, next Friday morning. If you uh, have any questions, Connect with us via the, the, the uh, uh, 
the website. And Ivan, you want to do so, say something in closing, and then we'll close. Thanks, Jesper. Yeah, thanks, everyone. Just a, just a quick uh, note, if you're not too sure how to do it, you can uh, uh, save the chat, and I suggest you do that. So you can do it in two ways. You can just click in the chat box and do a control A and copy and paste it into a Word document or an email where you can later refer, or you can just use the three little dots at the bottom right-hand corner of, of the chat to click on that, and you can save it to your local computer. It puts it by default into your documents under Zoom and in the the, the Zoom ID for the day, um, and then you can go back and uh, connect with everybody uh, that, uh, that that you want to and uh, refer back to the comments and questions there. So that's just a little bit of housekeeping to wrap up. So thanks very much, everybody. Have a great weekend, and uh, we hope to see you guys next week, Friday, again, if not sooner, on one of the other sessions. Everybody. Don't shut down. We're still trying to save the chat. I'm not as fast as you guys.